the lawn to Diani, who slams it home. Right at the right from the left block, layup good. Parker drives it through the hole to the right. Front comes around to score, and the Cavs win. Pierman dives into the end zone. Touchdown, Cavaliers. Cavalier Sports Weekly is presented by the Virginia Lottery. The Virginia Lottery, helping Virginia's public schools. And brought to you in part by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. On this edition of Cavalier Sports Weekly, presented by the Virginia Lottery. Making the honor roll was an expectation, not a reward. Welcome to Cavalier Sports Weekly. I'm Andrew Carraway, number 38 on the baseball team. We've got a full show for you today with basketball and a number of spring sports underway. But first, here's your play of the week. The play of the week is brought to you by SunTrust Mortgage. We make the American dream come true every day. I got him a little tripped up from behind and uh, they slid kind of slowly on that once I was able to turn the corner and I uh, was happy to, to get it in there. I hit the goalie a lot later, a, a lot more times later in the game, so I was happy to get one by him. Stay tuned, Virginia game highlights are coming up next. Here's a three-pointer, Jeff Jones knocks it down with a foul. So Jeff will go to the line for a four-point opportunity. Yes, you. Welcome back to the show. Our men's basketball team is on the road this week at Florida State, and we've got the story for you in our game highlights segment. The Cavalier game highlights are presented by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Here's Sylvan Landisberg pulling up and rattling through a jumper just inside of the three-point line. I thought that our, uh, our rotations early on were really good. I thought our aggression was really good. Zips a pass down low to Mike Scott, gets the defenders in the air, and then floats up a nice-looking jumper. Sylvan's into the front court now, dribbles between the legs, takes it down the lane, floater in the lane, is up and good. So Virginia's offense has sparked the life. The last two trips down the court. Pittsburgh, who had a conversation with the referee at a prime timeout that he had taken charge. Here's well. a nice feed into Tunji Soroye, and Soroye will bank it in up close with a foul. There's certain things that we got to do and continue to do, and, and a lot of things better than others in order to to to, to get wins. And, and uh, you know, the difficult thing now is that he, or even before, is that you're facing some of the best teams in the country, and uh, the, the margin of error is razor thin. Passes back out to Baker. He squares up and knocks down the three-pointer from the right wing. And just plus 1.8 rebounds per game. That's 10th in the conference. Here's a three-pointer. Jeff Jones knocks it down with a foul. Florida State who starts with an after the timeout. Passes off. Tony Douglas squirts off a jump shot. Three-pointer is up and good from the left wing. I don't think that our aggression waned very much in the second half. Uh, but I thought, you know, a combination of it, they executed a whole lot better. They made more open shots. And then, as I said, Douglas really took the game over. Going to fire another three-pointer. Same spot, same result. Picked up off the floor by Sylvan Lannisburg. He moves it into the front court. Crossing over. Kicks it back out. Ziblinski an open look from three. This one is up and perfect. The near side of the baseline. He'll get it to Jones. Jones takes it inside. Nice feed to Soroye, who has an open path and an easy bucket. A double major in math and economics, Jerome Mienzi is living proof that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. An outstanding student and a third year forward on the men's basketball team, Jerome is your student athlete of the week. 
The Student Athlete of the Week is brought to you by the Cavalier Team Shop Online, where every purchase benefits academic support for UVA student athletes. Making the honor roll was an expectation, not a reward. I would hear some of my friends say, oh, my parents say if I make the honor roll, then I'll get such and such. For me, it's if I didn't make the honor roll, then I'd be in trouble. I've always liked math, even from when I was a little child. And uh, my mom used to always talk to me about economics while I was growing up. She'd tell me what would be going on in the world and just teach me little economic concepts as I was growing up. And by the time I got to college, you know, economics came easy to me and then along with my natural love for math and just fit. Jerome was uh, a quiet uh, but serious student. Um, and in many ways, he's just like any other very strong student here at the university. It's surprising he can play basketball on the side because it's hard to see him any other way than just a very good student. Dr. Burton's finance class has a lot to do with the stock market and every day he comes in and the first five, ten minutes of class he talks about what's going on in the stock market currently, which is very interesting. And um, again, I can go back to my childhood. Uh, my mom would always watch CNBC and track stock prices and talk to me about it. So. Now that I'm learning uh, the physics behind that, it's, uh, it's very interesting. And then uh, finance is a good field for econ and math. You know, my math background will help me out in that class. So I, I just enjoy that class a lot. Spend a lot of his time studying. Um, I see him while we're in a bus, he's studying. We're in a plane, he's studying. Uh, after practice, spend time in the study hall when we get home. You know, like he started, his book is, you know, open. So I kind of learned a lot from him by just seeing some of, you know, watching some of the stuff that he does. He's uh, beginning to learn a lot here at the university about modern finance and a lot of the issues going on. He's very interested in this financial crisis, for example, which crops up in all the finance classes. And um, his, his questions are very good, but he's at the learning stage. You're almost not a finished product. He is uh, he's one of our very strong undergrads and he's doing very well. This summer, Jerome will be one of the two interns I've hired. I'll probably hire three or four when it's over. He's probably the third varsity athlete that I've had work here in the summer. Here's a nice dish down low, Jerome Mienzi. I'm always looking to get better, you know. You, you can't stay satisfied because then you'll never improve. So I'm definitely, you know, looking forward to getting better, contributing more, being uh, a more intricate part of this team. I would say he improved for the most, you know, his mental toughness and some of the things that he put more into the game, you know, and his strength wise and just his toughness on the car. I'm more confident in my abilities to play offense and defense because I'm physically stronger and more imposing, but my understanding of the game has slowed the game down for me. I know what to expect on the basketball floor so I can anticipate instead of react to something. And um, it's also helped me to, to teach the younger players of the team, to tell them without I've been through what to expect and help them learn and grow as a basketball player. If he didn't play basketball, it wouldn't really make a whole lot of difference uh, one way or another. He's the kind of kid we want here at the university. Visit the Cavalier Team Shop online at virginiasports.com and take advantage of this week's special offer. He was one of the most exciting players ever to play in the Atlantic Coast Conference. And with his number 44 being retired today, we bring you Sean Singletary in the Cavalier Flashback. Cavalier Flashback is brought to you by the Virginia Lottery. More than $3 billion to K-12 public education since 1999. The Virginia Lottery, helping Virginia's public schools. Singletary got the steal. He's going to the other end, and Sean sets it up and jams. 
25 seconds, shot clock off. Singletary, the crossover, Sean wants the three. Boom! Oh, a tip of the steal. Singletary takes it home. There are a lot of people here that will remember this night and say I was witness to one of the greatest basketball players that this university has ever seen. The drive, Sean puts it up and gets it to go. What a sweet move by Sean Singletary. Look at that pass. Singletary buries another one. Oh, a 360 whirling dervish. <laughs> I guess he's feeling it right now against Singletary. Somebody's got to stop him. Just uh, everyone move aside. The stage belongs to number 44. The steal, Singletary going to the other end. The layup is good. The layup is good. What an amazing shooting display by Singletary. McRoberts now on Singletary and a trace. Oh, are you kidding me? Holy cow, what a shot. Coming up after the break. Our 15th ranked women's basketball team faced a pair of ACC opponents this week in Virginia Tech and Maryland. We've got the highlights for you in our Women's Basketball Spotlight. The Women's Basketball Spotlight is presented by the Virginia Athletics Foundation. Now the bigs rotating up, pulls the three at the top of the circle. Wow. I knew this was a very dangerous game. As a matter of fact, that was what was written up on our board before we played the game today, the word dangerous. Swing at top of the key to Biggs again, and she drains another three at the top of the circle. It's an in-state rivalry. You've already won once, so you're, you know, feeling puffed out about it, and you really shouldn't be. And um, they're playing very well right now. And then when it started the way I kind of predicted it would, we went to zone, and that was really the answer for the game. It was just we, we played very smart in it, and we were able to rebound out of it, and that was the key, being able to rebound out of it. Free throw line to dry, had it deflected and stolen by Wright. What an athletic play. Ahead to Kristen London on the right wing, behind the back dribble. Lobs to Mohammed, right block. Cavaliers move it now. Layup with the left hand from Mohammed. Right at the top of the circle, crossing over. Down the lane. Layup with the right. How did he hit that? Cavaliers down, only seven. They whip it inside the Littles, right block. That's Layup nice with the right hand. That's an assist. Great job by London. Give her credit. She has brought energy to this program once again. It was 75% of the game we played zone, so. I mean, we got to do what we got to do. I mean, once you made the change, it finally clicked. But, you know, we got to learn how to start games off better than that. Littles inside to Hardick on the right block. Great feed to right, diving down the lane. Yes! Yeah, with the right hand. Oh, that's beautiful offense. I went to the zone, and when it worked, I stayed with it. I mean, I'm going to stay with something that works. I'm not going to worry about, you know, whether we're playing man-to-man -man or not. We'll go back to man-to-man -man very quickly, but... You know, it gave us, it got, we got 12 stops in a row. And Brittany Edwards says, get out of my lane. Edwards going left wing, the little bounce pass left baseline for Brittany Edwards. Yes! Yes! yes. She's on 18 feet. 31 30, Cavaliers with the lead. Back to Milner at the top of the circle. Milner going to Mohammed deep in the lane. She's double team steps through it and lays it in with the left hand. Back to Monica Wright. Now she's swinging around the perimeter to Littles against that 2 3 zone. Back door for Wright. Might have get it. Layup good. Littles attacking down the lane. Finger roll is good. That's too easy for Linda Littles. Davis driving with the left hand and the ball's deflected and stolen by Littles. Littles in the front court. A jump stop right block and lay it in with the right hand. It's nice when you have players like Monty and Linda and Aisha who can just, you know, take over. I just have to worry about helping them out on the defensive end. Mohamed left block and scored. Left hand layup and the foul. Milner on the right sideline. They double her back to Harding. A wide open Mohamed left baseline layup. Yes, good. that's the way to beat it. Going 
right wing to Middles now, right wing. Middles driving with the left hand, free throw jumper. Yes, 20 to 17, Virginia, 10 7 You know, it's great that we can come in here and, and garner the respect of Maryland. I think for the last couple of years, we've been a team that could come in here and maybe they didn't really have to play that hard to beat us, but you have to play us now. We're, we're real, we're for real, and we can beat you on any given night. And it's really a, back to being a very good rivalry. Coming to Charlottesville, it's not easy to beat us there, and it's not easy to bust the win here. I felt like we played a very good game up until the second or third segment where Maryland was scoring and we weren't. Um, they're, they're a very explosive offensive team. We just didn't match them in that segment, and that was really the difference in the game. I thought that Tolliver and Coleman just had um, outstanding games, and we didn't do much to defend them. But we had lots of opportunities. We had 22 offensive rebounds, 22. So that's that's a heck of a night. And we out-rebounded them by 13. So, you know, you, you should be a lot closer than, than we are, and we can't give up 94 points if we expect to win. 78 points is, is enough to win a game. So you, but you have to defend in order to, to win games like this. You have to defend, you have to, you have to get stops. Cavs stay in the man-to-man, -man, left wing to Tolliver. Off the screen from Kaiser, splits the double team down the line. Oh my gosh. That's an unbelievable move from the All-American. Up next, we've got the opening game of the men's lacrosse season, a preview of our baseball team, and more results in the Olympic Sports Spotlight. The Olympic Sports Spotlight is presented by the Virginia Athletics Foundation. What a beautiful day in February. Uh, great crowd here in Clock, and a really nice atmosphere for an early season game like this. Uh, and I thought we did come out ready to play, and I thought we carried the play to uh, Drexel in the first half. We've been working really hard in practice, and I think that it showed out here. We contested every ground ball, and we were moving the ball well. I think we need to continue to work hard in practice and keep that pace up and hopefully shoot a little better as we get more further into the season. Chad brings a toughness to our team that, uh, that I think is necessary, and he's all over the field and he's winning face-offs for us, but it's more just his uh, mentality on ground balls. He gets the ball up and out, which is uh, really what we need, and it's a huge help for us, and I think that uh, it's starting to show in the way that we play. I didn't think it was going in. I was just hoping I, I was able to get it on cage because I was so close in. And luckily, I guess it was, you know, a change up and it went in the top corner. As a senior, an experienced senior, we certainly expect him to step up in these kind of in these kind of situations. The first one wasn't going to be a work of art, uh, but I was pleased with our effort. I never thought that we, that we really let down. I thought we controlled the pace of play throughout, and uh, we can be smarter. We can shoot a little bit better. Uh, but it's a first, uh, it's a good first step for us. Three out of our 33 players are either freshmen or sophomores, but I'll tell you, this team returns a good nucleus of veteran players, both on the pitching mound and position player-wise. Our entire outfield has returned. One of our top infielders in Tyler Cannon, who's a junior, is, is, is back. And Franco Valdez, who caught 95% of our innings, is back behind the plate. So there is a, a, a good core of players, veteran players, back to lead the way, and some really exciting young freshmen that are really going to do a great job for us. The success that we've had in our baseball program here over the last five years, a lot of it's attributed to really top-notch clutch pitching at the front of the game and at the end of the game. And we're fortunate this year to have a veteran pitcher in Andrew Carraway who started in our rotation last year and a, a returning starter in, in Matt Packer. 
Last year, four out of our top six hitters were these freshman outfielders that played every day for us last year. So that's exciting. John Barr led us in hitting last year. Uh, Jarrett Parker is a much improved player this year. He's 20 pounds stronger, and that's really changed his game. Danny Grovat was a freshman All-American for us last year and hitting fourth in our lineup all year long. And, and David Coleman got a lot of clutch hits and made some clutch plays for us down the stretch last year. So those four outfielders returning are a big, big plus for us and allow those young players to get their feet wet a little bit. In other Cavalier sports action this week, Thanks for watching Cavalier Sports Weekly. I hope to see you all right here at Davenport Field on Friday as we open up our baseball season versus Bucknell. We'll cover that game on next week's show, along with more great stories and highlights. I'm Andrew Carraway, and until then, go Hoos! Cavalier Sports Weekly is presented by the Virginia Lottery. The Virginia Lottery, helping Virginia's public schools. And brought to you in part by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance.